Hi, my name is Colin Skipper Wing Bird, and I am the creator of The Crimson Fly. Welcome to the director's commentary for issue four. I figured that uh, this time I would try something different and, you know, give you sort of a face to match to the voice and see how that goes. So, who knows? Let's see what's. Oh my god, I forgot that that was loud. Wow. Yeah. Um. For this, I used free sound effects from freesound.org because they're free and I can't really afford to steal them from other people. So yeah, that's why the music is going to feel a little bit wonky in this. Um, but that being said, um, I think I did a pretty good job with issue 4. So really, the issue 4 is supposed to be the culmination of volume 1. In the first one where he introduces himself. In the second one, where he starts to get a handle on his powers. On the third one, where he thinks he's got it all figured out. And finally, the fourth one, where it just is, his lowest low is him trying to redeem himself. It's sort of his both his, his darkest hour and the climax of his story, if you go by the Joseph Campbell monomyth sort of structure. I wanted to set that up that way, so that way if Volume 1 was the only volume of The Crimson Fly I ever did, he got a sort of complete story arc rather than leaving people hanging. Um, I also gave him a sort of um, intangible um, villain to fight, that being the actual fire itself. Not a being that he could reason with, not a sort of bad guy that he has to be in a submission, but something that he can't really just outright fight. Maybe somebody with a more powerful skill set, like uh, Spider-Man or the Avengers, might be able to just simply put out the fire, but for the Kingdom of Fly, the best thing he can do is just save as many people as he possibly can. And it was interesting because this episode also allowed me to sort of explore a lot of um, elements that I'm not normally comfortable with, like fire itself as a special effect. I'm not good at that in any way, shape, or form. So, yeah, this was a bit of a learning curve. It was also a bit of a learning curve in terms of animation strategies as well. I ended up playing with a lot of camera moves and um, character actions and poses that I'm not normally comfortable with. Like having the camera rotate around the character, having the character pop in and out of frames, that whole shebang. But it was a lot of fun. It was a great learning experience. And in the same way that it was a great learning experience for me, it was also a great learning experience for the fly. Sure, he doesn't really so much change his mindset, but he learns to not um, to to think unconventionally and realize that it's okay to make mistakes, kind of get messy, not really know what's going on, as long as you keep trying to get better. And something else I learned how to animate: water. <laughs> I am not good at animating water. Um. But, yeah, I think overall it turned out great, just like it turned out great for The Fly. Um, and just like how there are a few running gags throughout the entire series, how he, it always starts on a rooftop and then ends on a rooftop, at least in the first three issues. It might change in volume two. Um, this time I decided to be nice to The Fly and not have it end quite as bittersweet as it normally does. He doesn't um, get arrested. He doesn't end up in a garbage can. He doesn't end up um, completely being a complete loser. This is an actual unambiguous win because I think it's important for your character to have that in an ongoing series. You can't have a character who is perpetually losing and then after a while start to feel you start to feel that it's nothing they do ever works out and nothing ever matters. So I decided to give the fly this first like completely unambiguous victory. And I think it felt pretty kind of nice. Mostly because it's kind of nice to do the series. But yeah, that's volume one of The Crimson Fly. It was an amazing journey to take. Um, starting not not this time last year, but more like, um, I would say October of 2014. Um, where I said that this was a project that I really, really wanted to do. And so, yeah, volume one has been really great. And so I'm looking forward to volume two, volume three, whatever comes in my way. Um, that being said, up next is the uh, um, intermission where I talk about volume one as a whole and what my plans are. And I will see you then.
This is Colin and Skipper Wing Bird signing out, and I'll catch you peeps later.